<laughs> you know, I was laughing the other day. I was thinking, Lord, this devotion isn't going to go over too well. Because <laughs> people, frankly, in Western culture just aren't ready for this one. I said, it's like we'll get me in trouble. So as a matter of fact, if I was in business, they'd probably say, you're fired. Why? Oh, I'm sorry. You don't know why, do you? Can't read my mind? <laughs> well, have you ever thought that maybe, just maybe, you're going too fast for God? You know, you're running way ahead of Him, trying to get things done before He wants them done? Never thought of that? Well, you figured that, what, God is like way ahead of you because he already knows what you're going to do and so he's already got it planned out. Which, yeah, okay, I can go with you on that. Let's think about that. Well, you know, he knows that you're going to go too fast and that he doesn't want you to go that fast. So he's going to go ahead and plan on trying to get you to kind of go full circle so you come back to where you should have been in the first place so that even though you're going that fast, you're kind of like, if you're going too fast... He's going to make you go around a circle, 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 circle. Sounds like a hamster, doesn't it? I kind of like to stop for a few minutes, you know, and I always hear this expression from everyone I know. Yeah, you know, I like Chuck Smith, but he talks too slow. You know, i got to speed up his tape. He talks too slow. thought about that. There was a rabbi one time that I talked to. He said, you have to catch up with your soul. That somehow I had gotten like ahead of something and I needed to catch up with my soul. And I thought, well, that's an interesting concept. And then later when, you know, I read the, actually before that, when I read the scriptures about be still and then did a study on stillness, which led me into a study on meditation and all kinds of ascetic life and kind of things that where people nowadays in the Western culture don't like to talk about unless they're from denominations because they think somehow that it's Eastern and that it's wrong and that, you know, we know better because, you know, we're, we're not agrarian society anymore. We're technologically advanced, so we're going to run headlong into disaster. I mean, run headlong into innovation because we know better. After all, we don't have to suddenly discover 20 years later that cigarettes are bad for us. We just moved right ahead and promoted it anyways. We don't do that kind of like wait on the Lord or wait on things to see how they're going to work out. We want to go ahead and push for it now and move and develop and get it and go and go and go and go. And go, and go, and go. See what I mean? Kind of like running too far ahead, too fast, too quick. It's kind of like production models. You know, they they get this idea and they make this production model and they throw it out there at some show or something and everybody wants it and they go, oh, everybody wants it, so let's do it. So they put it into production and get it out there and sell it to everyone and then suddenly they discover, man, you know what, the accelerated pad sticks. Oh, wait a minute, that wasn't, that wasn't our fault. Oh, you know, um, it wasn't quite as safe as we thought it was. We needed to have clean energy, so never mind that it caught on fire. Oh, that wasn't our fault, that's just an exception. Um, we kind of need to not, you know, like use up all this like oil because it's being used in some other way. So we need to kind of like do something else because we've made all these styrofoams and we've made such a mess of the world that now we need to change it into something else because we didn't think ahead. We didn't plan for the future. We didn't slow down. We didn't make things last. ahead of God? I do. I rush ahead all the time. Matter of fact, I figure out new ways to rush ahead. Kind of like these bulbs here. They're blooming. I don't know if you can see them because it's so bright with the sun right now. It's kind of like coming in. And 
I know the camera, I had to adjust it a little bit, so I got the contrast off and the light off because this camera doesn't handle bright sunlight so well, sometimes. It has to be behind it. So, anyways, this little daffodil here is blooming. And this tulip here is getting ready to, and these great hyacinths have come up, and they're, they're growing. But that's because on the nights that it was freezing, I took them inside. Cause I wasn't gonna let them die off, you know. It's like, hey, we got them, you know, at the store, so we planted them like you saw on one of the videos, the Devos, if you want to go back a few. And they were like, you know, little one inch thingies, and now they're boom, exploding because they were given water every day and sunlight whenever I could get it. I'd move the plants around to get as much sunlight as they could. And they're just growing, growing like a champ. But you know, they grow at a set rate, although it seems fast to me. If I sat here and watched it, it wouldn't seem like it grew that fast. But you know, if I sat here and watched it, maybe I could teach myself patience. I think some other cultures said that one time. You know, it's like they developed all these different techniques of like contemplating their navel, no, I'm kidding. No, they sat around and they thought, you know, they, they used to take the time to think about things, you know, like, wow, how did God make that? That feels, ooh, like rubber. It's kind of rubbery feeling. Wow, oh, that's kind of, that kind of feels coarse. This feels smooth. Huh, I wonder why. I wonder what differences there are in them. Why are they designed this way? You know, a lot of people go out of their way to rush into something before they ever think it through. Like if they had a chance to think about it, they wouldn't have done it. They always tell you that anyways after the fact, don't they? I mean, if I would have known now what I knew then, then I wouldn't have done it that way. There is somebody who knows now what's going to happen then, so you won't do it that way. That's God, you know? God has a tendency of kind of like giving us some ideas, I guess you'd say. Now, personally for me, I don't think those things are ideas. I think those are what God wants us to do. Some people call them the law. Some people call them the Old Testament. Some people call them the New Testament, like scriptures. Me, I like to call it good old common horse sense. Oh, I mean common sense. You know, what Ma and Pa Kettle used to say was horse sense, you know? If you had the sense of a horse, you know, you'd know when to go in and when to go out. You know, common sense tells you that if it's raining, you know, go inside, get an umbrella. You know that kind of thing, you know, or technology sense says check the weather report <laughs> before you go out. You know, if there's an earthquake coming, well, not earthquake, but if there's a tornado watch out, you don't go running right into that area, you know. Common sense, you know, there's warnings, there's these things that we should be thinking about. But do you have time to? Or the better question is, do you make time to stop and think about any sense? Do you make sense of things? Do you try to think about them? Or do you just make snap decisions? You see, the world wants you to be a multitasker. It wants you to be able to process information quickly, determine it, take it in, evaluate it, make a snap decision, and then run with it and go with it. And to make choices on the fly immediately. And I used to tell first responders that. Now this is what's really interesting is that this is how it works in practical life. You know, God says be still and know that I'm God. Because if you be still you might hear his voice. Because in a still small voice he speaks. So if you were still and you quieted yourself, I have stilled and quieted my soul. And so in the morning will I seek thee that I might hear your voice. See if we stilled ourselves calmed ourselves, then we would hear God speak. And then, 
we would ask him questions, talk to him, kind of relate, and get, get, get the full picture here. Like if we stilled ourselves when someone offended us, we could find out the full picture of why, what went on with them. But we don't normally do that, do we? We kind of react first. But the interesting thing is that in life, life seems to reflect God. I mean, life seems to be teaching us life lessons and life principles that God already put down in Scripture. You know, principles of life from the Creator. You know, because He created us, He kind of knows what's best for us. So, with first responders, it's interesting because I went to an OSHA class, you know, and I was taught first aid principles and all these things, you know, and I was Cal 10, you know, and I got my 10, OSHA 10 rating, you know, and all that stuff for, for safety, be a safety engineer, safety coordinator. And, uh, you know, I had to do that for industrial, you know, and I had to go out on this job, you know, and be the safety coordinator and give these teachings and classes, you know, that nobody ever listens to, you know, and tell all these guys, you know, to do common sense. But it's interesting is that in the old days, your first reaction was to rush into it. You were the first responder. You go in. That's not what you're taught anymore. You're taught to stop, evaluate the circumstance, which makes sense because, you know, you don't go rushing into a burning house when you see that the roof is about to collapse. You evaluate whether or not you have the opportunity to either go in the house if it's burning and that you know you have something to stay low to the floor or you can cover your mouth with, you know, kind of take the extra steps that might be needed in order to go in the house. Or you see that the fire department's coming down the street and you're not equipped and they are and you want to run in the house. 50-50 on that one. Or better yet, when you evaluate a situation, you kind of like look at where the person is and you see that well, I could apply first aid right now, but since they're on the train tracks, I think I better yank them out of the oncoming train because otherwise they're going to get cut in half while I'm giving them CPR. See what I mean? We're taught now to think first, then act. Evaluate. That's the first word. Evaluate. And they may change that pretty soon, but it'll still boil down to you need to think about it before you do it. Did you know the Bible talks about that? Yeah, really. It says, be still and know that I'm God. People keep saying they don't know God, and I keep saying, well, how still are you? Have you ever sat and watched the sunrise? You know, it's always a poetic gesture. You know, I love this poetic statement. You know, people say this all the time. Have you ever sat and watched the sunrise? Now, me, I have. Do you know how long it takes? A long time. Because there's dark to slightly lighter to lighter, 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 pre-dawn, and then it gets lighter, 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 and then it gradually filters out to where it becomes sunrise, and you see that first peak come out, as well as the sunset. And I've done that in Alaska. <laughs> I've done it in different parts of the world. I used to do it in Jerusalem when I was up on the rooftop where I camped out at the Mediterranean Hostel, which is the uh, the Petra Hostel, I should say, not the Mediterranean, the Petra Hostel, which was where Allenby had been, you know, and it's kind of an old, beautiful setting up above the Dome of the Rock, and you could look down on everything. Used to watch the sunrise, you know, come up over the east, you know. You know where that's it, where that is, yeah, you know what comes up over that way. <laughs> so I'd watch the sunrise, you know, and it was kind of like, took time. So I take the time to sit and be still and to enjoy it. And the funny thing is about sitting still and waiting or being still and listening is that you notice things. Because the first thing that happens when you try to be still is that you get flooded with everything you feel like you need to do and you gotta hurry and do this and do that and do this and do that. You know, you don't wanna be still because you're used to moving and doing and acting and reacting and being and existing. But if you learn to be still, if you silence your own voices, if you calm your soul and emotions, you don't just hear 
God speak, you might hear other things too. I told someone once, I said, you know, I used to watch the Aurora Borealis every night. So I lived in Anchorage and then I also lived farther north. And there was one year where you'd see the Aurora Borealis come out just about every night. It was awesome. I was up on my rooftop of the garage. See, I lived with a roommate and I'd go out and he had a garage that was just, you know, typical garage, just kind of a, you know, point. Then in the back he had a shed with a flat roof. And it kind of faced out towards the east. And that seemed to be kind of north, really, because in Anchorage it was kind of like north-facing, sort of. And so, when the Borealis would come out, when the northern lights, as you call them, would come out, you'd watch them dance, you know, it was beautiful. And then, if I was out, like, really, 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 really late at night, you know, like when I was up in Nome and stuff, and I did the same thing up there with that, you could hear it. Really. When it was cold enough, and you were out there in the middle of nowhere, and you were still and watched, you could hear the Borealis. I used to say to people, and I don't know if it's true or not, but I'd say, that's the glory of God. That's the Shekinah glory. That's the Shekinah, you know, and it's speaking to me. You know, God spoke to me through it. Now, that's not what I mean by God speaking to me, but in a way, he used that physical representation to determine a spiritual reality that I could identify with. And so it was kind of nice, a little blessing between him and I. But I can tell you this, if you be still, quiet down, calm down, not only will you notice things around you, you'll feel your soul and your blood pressure and your heart rate and your spiritual rate, so to speak, come down to a level where you might catch up with God. Because you see, God's not in a hurry. God has never been in a hurry. God will not rush for you. He's not going to move any faster since the world began than he does. He's not going to hurry He's not going to speed it up or slow it down. Now, some people say, except the days be shortened. You know, what about that? Well, shortened is not speeding it up. It's just cutting it off. <laughs> the way God does things, you blow your mind, man. He turns the sun backwards. <laughs> Slows things down, all right. But In other words, his timing is perfect. He doesn't react. He acts. And he acts according to his own way and his own will. So, when you slow down, your body, soul, and spirit, and calm the thoughts of your mind, you know, and quicken, as it were, or put to peace your emotions and bring them down to a level, then suddenly you might find that you affect people around you. That if you could be still in the midst of a anxious, anxious, anxiety-ridden, highly inflammatory group, you might, just by that peace within, affect them and calm them down. And they might feel your peace. Because, you see, we've been given a peace that passes all understanding. And as it emanates from us, as it is going out forth from us by way of God doing it, not you, then the Holy Spirit can calm people down. Because you see, in this world right now, there's this false teaching out there that wants to hype everyone up. They want to wind them up like a hamster, you know, and get them, oh, the Holy Spirit is like, oh, a fire, you know, he's going to burn you, burn you, burn you, you know, and make you into some kind of raging, touring inferno. Because they take one scripture, I would rather you were hot or cold, you know, and I would rather you be hot or cold, but not lukewarm. So they think that they got to fire somebody up. You know, they got to inflame them to act and act passionately without thought. Now, we have a word for that. We call it a zealot, where, you know, they get all carried away, but they don't know what they're doing because <laughs> they don't realize the consequences of their action. 
But you find that in the quiet calm of peace, then the spirit comes down like tongues of flame. Not some major massive roaring inferno that you want to feel some kind of emotional rah 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 re, you know, and that's not really what goes on when it comes to God. God doesn't want a bunch of people jumping up and down excited and rolling around on the ground. When you get to heaven, you're not going to be doing that. You may fall flat on your face, but you won't get back up. You'll stay down. Trust me. That's called holiness. So, learning how to come to a place of peace, learning how to evaluate things being said to you, learning how to listen as opposed to react, that's going to always involve you slowing down your pace, stopping the automatic, you know, high speed, let's amp it up, let's take some energy drinks and let's just get motivated speakers to come in and wind us up so that we could be the little toys that the world is making us and we could march and beat with everybody else and march to destruction. Or let's back up. Stop where you're at. Be still right now and talk to God. Because that's what I want to do with you. I don't want you to take this video and run with it and go off and, you know, pass it around to every single person you find. No, what I want you to do, really, is I want you to stop what you're doing. I want you to quit being influenced by people running you ragged, by you letting yourself get your emotions haggard, haggard or being brought to a place of hypedness where you have to hype up or amp up yourself by way of either you need this spiritual fix by winding up on the Holy Spirit or winding up on caffeine or winding up on your energy drink and really creating false sensory perception. Because you see, what happens when you get your nerves jangling like that? You think you've got the Holy Spirit and you're going through caffeine withdrawals. Or you think, oh, I had a word of knowledge. I really did. I had a word of knowledge. I'm so fast. I couldn't figure out. You know, I know it's all that caffeine that's coming through you and all that energy drink that you're talking so fast. So you realize you're still talking so fast because you can pick it up right now and you can go ahead and talk that fast because after all, techies talk that fast and they just talk that fast because you're talking about technology and they go and wrap it up because, you know, they're going to talk about it as quickly as they can because they have to study so much and they have to get it all input that they're inputting all this data and they're getting it within themselves. So they're able to talk just as fast as they need to because guess what? The Holy Spirit is the ability to talk that fast and they think that the Holy Spirit is really working in them and they're really just wound up. Use common sense. Wind down. It's not about talking a million miles a minute. It's not about how fast you can get to a Bible study. It's not about how fast you can run off to go do something or how much you get done. It really is about one thing. Got your attention? <laughs> one thing. Let's emphasize it with the alarm system. And that's being still and knowing God. Because in the stillness, not in the tornado, not in the flood, not in the alarm system, not in all the world and its ways of winding you up, will you hear God. But in the Word of God, when you're quiet, and that's why Jesus got up long before the sun rose, when it's quiet, then you can hear God speak to you. Then you can, as it were, catch up with God. Because in order to catch up with God, you have to slow down. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. They rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. We that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened. Ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves 
waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is not hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. It's going to say, how could it not be hope? But if we hope for that, we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Wait on the Lord. You're running too far. You're running too fast. You're running ahead of the game. To catch up with God means to wait on the Lord. So, it's up to you. You can run around like a chicken with his head cut off. Or, you could wait on the Lord. And catch up and see what he has for you. <laughs>